I'm going to talk a bit about the digital print corrugated packaging, some of the trends and some of the challenges in terms of the ink side of the business that are associated with that. Um, very quickly about Sun Chemicals, so for anybody that doesn't know, Sun, Sun is one of the ink manufacturers uh, globally, both from an analog and digital perspective. Uh, very uh, heavily involved in the packaging industry, but within digital inks, pretty much touching any application um, you could think of. And it's not just about inks. We develop uh, pigments, coatings, resins, um, and most of you will come into contact with the Sun product at some point in your in your day-to-day -day lives. So I'm going to talk uh, about corrugated and, and like, like everybody, but. Often when you, you talk to someone uh, not necessarily from the industry or doesn't understand the complexities of print, corrugated seems a fairly simple application, simple substrate to print, um, but it's actually extremely diverse and, and has, a, has a number of challenges. So the, the concept of, of a single solution that performs perfectly for every, every eventuality uh, is the dream that we're all shooting for, but perhaps there's some things that we need to address before we come to that. Um, but first about the trends, and I'm, I'm kind of pleased that most of these have been covered already in the previous talks. My research, um, which included reading Sean's work, of course, uh, tends to point to those. So I focused on four key trends for the corrugated that I think tie most closely in, into where, where inkjet can play. Um, so the first one being cost efficiency in terms of the speed to market that we've heard about, um, the reducing the waste, um, move to light weighting. Obviously, sustainability, which really became more than a mega trend, more a necessity um, for pretty much every business now. Uh, and, and we heard about um, more and more we're talking about intelligent packaging, um, be that QR codes, um, RFID, interactive packaging, the ability to add VR capability or, or scanning codes so the consumer can interact with the packaging and, and the brand can get the data, as, as was previously mentioned. And then the strong growth in e-commerce and personalization, which has kind of taken a, an onward step, as was mentioned earlier, that there's, there's a trend to more simplified packaging, but with a, with a personal touch, especially uh, in country um, and, and the different regional variations. Obviously, there's a, there's a lot more when you, when you look behind that in automation, skills gap, and to counterfeiting. There's, there's a huge amount of, of work and background going into, into corrugated, which makes it one of the more exciting industries that, that we're attacking. But with opportunities come challenges. So, so if we look at the direction for digital and where it can really play, a lot of, a lot of this was touched on earlier in terms of the, the move to even shorter runs than, than previously, uh, the, the benefits of on-demand printing, reducing the, the pressures on inventory and creation of, of analog uh, rollers and, and screens, uh, the potential for double-sided printing, process simplification, high, higher quality graphics and displays, uh, and, and those e-commerce and automation arguments that, that were made by, by Sean and Robert earlier. Those, there, are, there are a number of challenges that we need to unlock that really see digital penetrate the market more and realize its full potential. And, and one of the challenges we have in digital is there's this expectation that there's this model everybody wants to do everything with inkjet. If you go into a conventional corrugated plant today, you'll probably see uh, a flexo line printing certain types of corrugated for different, certain markets, and a litho or litho lamination line for others, but digital has to do it all. Right? So if you're going to invest in a digital press, you need to do all of the litho work and all of the flexo work, or at least combinations of those, to justify it today. Uh, and that's tricky. Right? The other thing from an ink manufacturer's point of view is that every press has different nuances, different print heads, different electronics, different waveforms. And so the, the concept of one ink being suitable for corrugated in general, it just doesn't exist. Um, we, we clearly need to work on the structure um, and convincing people to look at the overall cost and the value chain and the, the, the value chain costs rather than the cost of the price of ink or, or the specific meter squared, you have to consider all of the data that Robert showed about uh, waste reduction and things like that. And then the big challenges that exist and are coming up more and more in terms of legislation and governmental uh, pressure on recyclability of packaging, 
and substrate changes um, for, for various reasons, including that, which I'll touch on. And as an ink manufacturer in the past, we've been pretty guilty of saying, hey, no one talks about ink. Why, why are we always left out? We're the most important guys. Um, and and the, real, <laughs> the reality is, it, I, I may argue it's a little bit true on the next slide, but without the other component parts of the system, it just doesn't work. Like ink on its own is, is nothing. But we have to adapt that product to make sure it's stable, compatible, that it works with the print heads, the drive electronics, that we have the right waveform, that we have the ink substrate interaction nailed down, um, and then we deliver all the application properties that are needed. Because it's more than just the printing part that the ink has to function in. Um, we have to develop the chemistry to be right, to get the right image quality to work uh, system in the printing process. But then within this market, Obviously, there's the corrugation, there's the need for the ink to be stable within a gluing and folding process. Um, it has to look good on the shelf. It has to have a, a shelf life of the ink within the process, so it has to have a fastness, it has to have visual appeal, it may need to provide haptic effects. Uh, it has to perform in use. So in terms of its abrasion resistance, its compliance, if it's for food packaging, um, the potential of migration for the ink through the packaging, um, and that it's got clear and readable information in terms of the quality. And then, of course, the, the big topic of what do we do at the end, the, the product life cycle, how do we manage the recyclability, the reuse, the de-inking. Um, so there's a lot that we need to consider throughout the process. And that quite often, all of those considerations lead to quite a tug of war at times where, where we're trying to find compromises within the solution. So one of the trends in the market is that digital printing can deliver higher quality print, right? Pretty much everybody said that this morning. And often that's driving towards higher quality papers or liners that are being used. But then you have the converse argument that everybody wants to get the operation costs lower, right? Using cheaper materials. So those two kind of don't add up. So what you end up with is, oh, we want the digital higher quality, but we want to be able to use the, the lower quality paper to achieve that. Completely with the, with the increased recyclability, it's not just recyclability of the final product, it's the recycled content of the board that's being printed. Right? There's, there's a big drive to use more recycled content, and very little is 100% recycled. But the more recycled content you push into a product is good, right? but it creates a variable substrate. It's, it's much easier to print on fresh substrate, fresh paper, than it is recycle content, and so you get variations in the print uh, surface that the ink has to adapt to. Uh, there's also a move to primary packaging almost becoming the new secondary packaging. So we saw Sean's example of the Amazon boxes with the print and the advertising on the outside as a marketing opportunity. But Amazon also give you a, an option now where you can say, I don't want the brown box on the, on the top of my product, and so the item that you buy arrives in its printed, corrugated, branded box, with an Amazon sticker slapped on the front. But that means the print has to go through more abrasion. Um, it's in, it's, it needs to arrive in your home in a perfect condition because that's the representation of the brand. So there's a lot more pressure potentially put on the print itself um, than previously. And then, of course, this uh, increased legisla legislation. There's, there's been a lot of talk about Aquis, and I'm going to continue it, but part of the reason one of the drivers for aqueous technology is the amount of reclassification of UV materials and, and their safety and use and chemical responsibility. The good news is that a lot of developments have happened uh, over the last 10 plus years that enable us to, in inkjet, to meet the capacity needed in many situations, you've heard already, with different chemistries, UV, aqueous, and, and soy oil. Let's not forget there's a lot of corrugated mono print done with, with oil-based. We can match the quality in inkjet now of, of HD Flexo and Offset, and more and more we're competitive, especially at those shorter runs, which, uh, which was explained really well by, by Robert earlier. And so there are a number of entry points for corrugated, but to think that inkjet is a replacement of analog technology, like in, like in every industry, is, is probably a misnomer. It can be, um, as, as we've seen, but it, it's more likely to be a complementary at this stage. Uh, and there's lots of ways that it can find its way in through the wall manufacturing, alongside 
the fillers in line with the fillers, either direct to pack or printing on the liners. There's different ways in which we can orientate our business to, uh, to adopt inkjet. Um, and this is, this is how we see inkjet being used um, it, against its, its uh, analog equivalent, so uh, different technologies, whether it's brown box with, uh, with, with print, so you can see one to two color tends to be aqueous roll to roll today, moving through four color and litho lamination, where, where UV probably is predominant today, um, and UV multiplus for that high, high level um, point of purchase uh, corrugated display. Uh, so, so my number here is slightly lower than, than, than Robert's. So he, he said 60 plus percent of the uh, corrugated market is for food. Uh, oh, was it Sean? And uh, one, of you, <laughs> one of you did, I had 40%. Um, and that, that's starting to drive this question of UV versus aqueous, especially around food packaging with it being so prevalent. Um, because we need to be list compliant, right? Uh, whether that's Swiss ordinance, Nestle compliant, all, all of the EU regulations, uh, low migration capable, uh, to work with the absorption and drying and, and the potential cure and, and look at the barrier layers and effectivity of, of that or the inner packaging layer. The market perception of UV, which is clearly changing because everybody's spoken about water base this morning. And then in terms of the integration and, and, and printing part, there's no, pot, no doubt today that UV is in, easier to integrate. The reason that a lot of the presses are running UV inks is it, it's, it's easier to do, right? It's easier to dry fast. Um, it, it stays open in the head longer, and it tolerates substrate variance better than, better than water based on its own does. Uh, and it can give high gloss prints. So today, there's far more installations of UV ink than aqueous, but for sure, aqueous is going to overtake, as we've, as we've heard. And what we find is, to make that happen, there's going to have to be a lot of project collaboration. Uh, the attacker guys talked very, very well about the potential there and, and how you have to work with the press manufacturers, the converters, understand the consumer needs, how we bring the digital part into that to create a holistic approach on how we, how we challenge the market. And what we think, and, and what's been encouraging to hear is, is, is other adoptions of this, is that if you combine an inkjet or a digital process with, with a coating, a primer, overprint varnish, uh, glue, glues, resins, um, you expand the possibilities of digital, you can accelerate the time to market, and you're, you're using that coating to bridge the gap today. So may, maybe aqueous inkjet doesn't fulfill every need on low weight, low cost pa uh, papers and liners, but with a coating it can do. Uh, and it doesn't add a lot of cost, but it adds a lot more flexibility in your process, gives you the opportunity to print more substrates with a, with a far less variable surface, and give you the print quality without massively increasing the cost. So it, it simplifies the process, and it enables you to meet those regulatory and global challenges from a, from a compliance point of view. And so that, that's why we, we try and look at an integrated approach to how we approach this market. So, of course, the development of, of high-quality digital inks for a range of print heads and applications, working with OEM partners, but also bringing the coating into play so that we can look at the ink, the substrate, the application, the regulations, and, and together with the partners, understand do we want a primer, could there be a haptic effect, an overprint varnish, as well as the inkjet part of that to enable really us to hit all of the targets that the, the converters, the brands, and the consumers expect us to do. So very whistle-stop, but the, the conclusion really is the future is very bright for inkjet and corrugated printing. We heard it's 1%. For sure, it's going to grow further than that. Um, UV has been the dominant technology from an inkjet side and been the mainstream for probably 10, 10 or more years now, but aqueous technology is for sure going to become the dominant technology, driven by that increased productivity of, of the hardware, the cost implications, and then the legislation environmental concerns that will continue to make people think more about an aqueous technology than, than perhaps some of the, the other uh, options. The use of analog primers, potentially digital ones, and overprint varnish is, will also enable us to print on a wider range of substrates, substrates to give that flexibility to a converter to print on a wider range of goods and start to have the potential of the inkjet press really trying to match the output of, of the conventional, the, two, the, the different types of conventional printing. 
And whilst it offers a range of operational flexibility, um, a one solution fix all, this, this magic bullet for Inkjet probably doesn't exist. But if we work together, create that collaborative partnership, think about the different touch points in the market, then the future is extremely bright for digital in corrugated market. Uh, I'm, I'm here for the whole show, so c contact us here if you have any questions. I'd be very pleased to talk to you. Thank you very much.